Welcome to the Tribe of Testimonies. Here you will find conversations with faithful Native American members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, sharing their stories and their love of the Savior. My name's Andrea Hales. I'm Navajo, and I'm glad that you've decided to come and join us today. Today my guest is Jessica Delay. Um, she is just amazing. I don't know. I think maybe I personally connected with her a little bit more than maybe some of my other guests. Some of the other guests because um, she just is in a similar life place that I am. She homeschools her kids. I don't. But she she has kids around the same ages that I do and I just I don't know I just felt a real connection to her and so I hope that you find a connection with her because um I think that's what each one of these guests brings is something that we can all relate to whether whatever age whatever tribe whatever location we live um but I, I'm really thankful for Jessica and her time, and I hope you enjoy this conversation with her. Tonight, I am on the phone with Jessica Delay. Um, Jessica, would you please introduce yourself? Yeah, um, well, I am Jessica, and I have six children. My oldest is 15, and my youngest is three, and they're just a delight. I love being a mother. I love um, teaching them. Um, that's what I do full-time. I'm a, um, We homeschool, and um, I really just enjoy spending my days with my children, and um, my husband's in law enforcement, so he works long days, and um, we love it when he is home with us, when he gets to be home with us, and so um, it's really a, a great time, but yeah. Great. Um, would you share something about your heritage, um, which tribe you are, and something about your heritage, whether that's a story, a celebration, a ceremony a way of life any anything that you love about your heritage especially if if it relates to the gospel of jesus christ oh sure um well i am from the confederated tribes of grand ronde so that's where i am enrolled it's in oregon and um it's uh it makes there's a few tribes that make up the confederated tribes of grand ronde of which I am Rogue River and Umpqua, Lower Umpqua. And um, I'm also, um, I have Snake Shoshone in my um, ancestry. And um, so I am um, I could be enrolled in Shoshone Bannock if um, I believe I would qualify for that. Um, I also have Southern Paiute in my ancestry. I don't know anything about that side though. The sad thing is I don't know know much about that at all. Um, my, um, my Oregon tribes, Umpqua and Rogue River, I grew up um, knowing these tribes. This is, I, I grew up in the Pacific Northwest and um, always being um, pretty near to our reservation. And, um, and so I know a lot more about um, the Confederated tribes of Grand Ronde than I do of the other ones. But um, so I joined the church when I was 17, and um, I'll talk about that a little bit later, but um, I was doing family history work a few years ago, and um, I think because I'm, um, I'm some Utah tribe, some Utah Idaho tribes, there's been um, some distant family members who've done quite a bit of work on family history, so I can't really take any credit for what I've found because it's a lot of the work that other people have done, but it's pretty incredible because um, as a convert, nobody in my family are members of the church. I'm the only one in my family. And um, 
as far as I knew, nobody in my ancestry was until I was doing some family history work. And I come to my three times great grandfather and his name is Nephi. And <laughs> it was just, what? it was incredible. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, this is on my grandma's side. And so I call up my grandma and I said, hey, grandma, did you know that your great grandfather's name was Nephi? And she was like, oh, yeah, that vaguely sounds familiar. She doesn't know anything about the Book of Mormon or anything. And she just was, yeah, that sounds a little bit familiar. And I was like, well, awesome, you know. And um, and then later I came across some more information about him. And um, it was actually quite a bit of information. And it was that um, he was adopted um, by... Uh, a Mormon pioneer family. And so he had um, survived um, some war and uh, I guess his parents were killed. And so um, this family was paid to take him in and adopted him. But, um, but then when he grew up, he married their daughter. Hmm. And then, so I was able to go back to my grandma again and say, Hey grandma, you know, you have some European ancestry, not only <laughs> European ancestry, some Mormon pioneer ancestry. And she was like, wow, I had no idea. <laughs> and, um, and so it was great to find these things out and to, um, and to just kind of have that, uh, it was, it was a great experience because I kind of knew, okay, this is why, um, why I joined the church kind of, you know, there was somebody in my ancestry kind of doing something, pushing, prodding, putting people in, you know, trying to put people in the right place. I know that's not the job of our ancestors, but, you know, um, so that they could make sure that this continued, because as I look back, I can't really see where, um, where the line ended, where um, the church membership kind of ended. It doesn't look like um, after my three times great grandfather and his wife, it doesn't look like they continued in the church. So, um, so yeah, it's just neat that, um, that I could see that there was work that needed to be done and it was already done by other people, but, um, but that there was that ancestry there and just a really cool experience. That is super cool. I'm glad that you were able to find that because yeah. not everybody is able to find, find things like that. Yeah, it was definitely not um, not my work, um, not my digging. Somebody else had found it and had um, and had uh, put it up on on Family Search, and it was just great a great thing to come across and to be able to tell my grandma and my other family members. And um, it's funny because my grandma, I did I never really met anybody who doesn't really have um, a desire to know about their ancestry, but she kind of doesn't <laughs> she, kind of, <laughs> she kind of isn't very enthusiastic about it and I'm like hey look what I found and she's kind of like oh that's neat I'm like what else can you tell me and she's like I don't know <laughs> well thanks a lot but I'll look oh, for it myself yeah <laughs> my oh, great aunt neat. though her sister she's she's more enthusiastic about it so I it's great to talk to her about those things but but yeah and so um yeah Nephi and his wife Olive they moved to Fort Duchesne Utah and um, and then they raised um, Blanche, who was um, my grandma's grandma, and and yeah, ever ever since then, um, it's been um, there haven't hasn't been any European ancestry until my grandma um, married my grandpa, and he's European. But but yeah, she was she was surprised to find that. So hmm. not as surprised as I wanted her to be. But <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah, it was just it was just really cool. Yeah. So, well, yeah, let's, let's hear your conversion story. How did you, um, how did you find the church and how did, how were you converted? So I live in Vancouver, Washington, and, um, this is where I grew up. I'm back here. I lived in California for a little over 10 years with my husband. Um, and we moved back here a few years ago, but, uh, it's a, it's actually, there's a lot of members here. And I learned recently that, um, our church is the biggest religious organization in this area. Um, and so I knew a few members growing up, not a whole lot, um, just a handful. And, um, and then I was in high school and one of my friends said, Hey, I'm, 
I'm learning from the missionaries. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I was like, you can do that. They just teach you. Well, that's cool. I'd like to do that. And then next thing I know, I'm being taught by the missionaries because, you know, you can't really say that without it, without, without it happening. happening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Without somebody taking some kind of action and being like, ooh, an opportunity. So it was great. Um, I was taught by um, Elder Joshua Howard Francis and um, Guillermo Mendez, and they were great. They um, they had such a wonderful spirit about them teaching me and um, and so uh, asked me to be baptized, and I had enough faith to be baptized, and it was really amazing um, to have that opportunity. And I did, um, I did fall away shortly after I was baptized, partly because um, I was baptized my senior year of high school, and um, you know, after your senior year, your friends kind of go their separate ways, and I moved. And I didn't know anything about, you know, transferring records or anything like that. And um, so I just kind of fell away from the church. And I look back at that time and it's kind of, um, I've thought about that. And I thought, why, you know, I've lamented over that time when I fell away from the church. Because I still had a testimony. I still knew it was true, but I just didn't, I wasn't active. Mm -hmm. And so I've definitely looked back on that and been like, why did that have to happen? You, you know, kind of asking heavenly father and, um, just kind of got this little confirmation that, you know, when you're 17, you're, you're very impressionable and you're very open to being taught usually. And I just had the idea that if it had been any later that I had been invited to learn about the gospel, I may have been too skeptical. I may have not been as teachable and um, wouldn't have had that opportunity. And so it's just great that it's like, okay, I understand why, you know, even though it was hard for me to look back and think, oh, I, I lost a couple years where I could have learned so much and I maybe even would have had the opportunity to serve a mission and I couldn't do that because I wasn't, I wasn't active. Um, but it was, it's, it's nice to know that, okay, well, at least I have the opportunity to have the gospel in my life because when I was invited to learn about it, I was open to it. Mm -hmm. So, so that was a, a great thing. And then, um, so yeah, uh, the missionary who, who mainly taught me, um, he, I, I wanted to get a hold of him a little bit after I was sealed in the temple to my husband after we got married. Um, because I think the last he had really heard of me, I was inactive. And um, so I looked him up because I knew he lived in Wyoming and I knew he was a dentist. And I was like, all right, that shouldn't be too hard to find. Just Google him. Mm -hmm. And I found his practice and I found him and I emailed him and it was wonderful. It was um, about 10 years after I was baptized that I, I was able to contact him. And um, it was great. We had a great conversation back and forth and I was able to tell him, you know, uh, President Hinckley's quote, I think, is who said it. When you save a girl, you save generations or, or something like that, I think, is what is what the quote is. I should have looked it up so I could. But I'm pretty sure it's when you save a girl, you save generations. And um, and, you know, let him know that I'd had I'd been sealed in the temple and had children in the covenant and um, they'll all be missionaries, hopefully, and all of those things. And so and then he let me know something really special that um in a blessing he had gotten he said that um he was told that there was people he knew before he came to this world and he promised them that he would find them and teach them the gospel and he said that he knew that i was one of those people and i just it was just amazing to hear that and to know that that we know there are people that we had relationships that we knew before we came to this earth and just incredible that I, I had the opportunity to learn the gospel and that that promise was fulfilled. And it also gets me thinking about when we leave this earth, are we going to have people asking us, Hey, you knew about the gospel. Why didn't you tell me about it? You know, I could have, really um enjoyed it while I was on the earth and and learned so much while I was on the earth and so it always reminds me to be a better missionary it's definitely a reminder 
and um, something that I I try to try to be better at all the time. Try to be a better missionary all the time and and um, share the gospel. But um, it was just really special for me that um, that he shared that with me. Okay. Well, thanks for bringing tears to my eyes right from the beginning. <laughs> Um, how did you come back to the gospel? Oh, yeah. Um, well, I, I always loved the gospel from the moment I learned about it. And, um, I wanted to be active. And so I was like, well, what does it mean to be active? Like, what is it? I was like, I realized I'm inactive. Oh, wow. There's that word. I'm inactive. What? So how do I become active? And I was like, well, active, being active requires action. So I guess it just means going to church. So I was like, all right, well, I guess I better figure out which ward I'm in. So I figured out which ward I was in and I went to church and um, I went to church that Sunday and I haven't stopped going since. So it was just, I just needed to be active. And it was a great ward that I went back to. They were so supportive. And um, some of my favorite people um, that I'll remember for the rest of my life are um, were in that ward and were... Um, were really great uh, teachers and influences over me. And so, yeah. That's awesome. Um, how did you meet your husband? We met through friends. Um, and he's from California and I'm from up here. But um, we met through friends and then we kind of did a long distance thing for a little bit. And um, then I moved down to California for him. <laughs> so... Yeah, he didn't have to move up to the Northwest, but I got him up here eventually because we're here now. <laughs> so, yeah. That's awesome. But yeah. My husband, um, he grew up in the church. And so, um, and uh, so it's great. He's, I learned a lot from him. And yeah. So, that's so great. Um, <clears throat> you said you have six kids. Yes. Yeah. What yes. Are, what are the age range? So my oldest is 15. He'll be a sophomore in high school. And I actually don't homeschool him because he doesn't want to be homeschooled. So um, he's uh, he goes to the public high school and he plays football and um, he loves that. And then um, and then I have three girls in a row that are 11, 10 and eight. Um, and so they're my main ones that I school. They, they take up most of my time. <laughs> and then um and then I have a five year old who is, you know, kindergarten age and so he's just learning to read and stuff. So that's so fun. And then our youngest is three years old and his name is Ilamani, which means Helaman in Fijian. Oh, so. is your husband Fijian? Yeah, my husband's from Fiji. He lived there until I think he was about nine. And then he moved to the Bay Area and so kind of grew up more in the Bay Area, spent a lot of his time there, so. Cool. Yeah. So, as you have read the Book of Mormon through the years, um, so the last, last week I got to go be part of the Book of Mormon videos as an extra, and I was just thinking about if I could choose to place myself in a, in a different story here or there, where would I choose to place myself where would you choose to place yourself which stories which story or stories would you choose in the book of mormon and why wow that's incredible i guess um i've never really thought about that but wouldn't it be great to be right there at the crowning moment when the savior appeared to the nephites right that would be that would definitely be my choice and I think most people would choose that. That would be, that would be um, pretty incredible, but also intimidating. <laughs> am I worthy, right? Like, yeah. am I worthy to be here? Um, do I know who he is? Do I recognize him as who he is? I've thought about that. I haven't thought about it with the Book of Mormon, but I've thought about it with um, the New Testament. And, you know, if I were there, um, would I have known that Jesus Christ was the Savior of the world? Would I have believed him or would I have been one of those people you know that ridiculed him right and of course we all hope to that we would believe him but there's so many there's so many voices so many decisions to make in the world and so 
I really just would hope that I would recognize him as my savior and, and be worthy to be in his presence. And so, yeah, to be at that moment in the Book of Mormon would be, would just be incredible. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, so who has been um, a good influence in your, besides the missionary that you've been able to reconnect with, who else has been a good influence on in your life as a as a convert? I yeah, there's been there's been so many because I have to look outside my family usually, um, and so going back to when I um, became active in the church again, there was this couple, um, and they were over the young single adults, and uh, they were just really instrumental in teaching me a lot and helping me to understand the gospel. And I remember sitting in a class they were teaching, um, the husband was teaching one time and he was teaching about um, the great apostasy and the restoration. And I had been taught that from the missionaries, but of course, you know, you're, you're just taught the very limited information in short amount of time. And so it was just another, another thing that fortified my testimony and just being like, wow, this makes so much sense. And there was so much clarity in that lesson. And, um, that really helped me to, um, to further my testimony. And it's just people like that who are willing to fulfill their callings and have the spirit and be worthy to, to teach and to be a messenger. And, um, so yeah, that, that couple, that, that helped me when I first came back to the church was, was really great. And I'm still in contact with them and, and they're just really great people. And my bishops throughout um, my different wards and other mothers who have taught me so much. I, you know, I say I'm a mother of six and most people outside the church are like, wow, you really know what you're doing. And I'm like, no, (laughs) (laughs) I I don't. (laughs) I really go by, you know, I'm, I'm like, it's as long as God guides me, as long as I'm, as I have the spirit, then I can, I can do what I need to do, but I really can't claim to be any kind of professional. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's been so many women in, um, in my life who've also been such good influences and ha- have helped me. So yeah, it's been, it's been really great. Yeah. Um, how about the family that you grew up in? Did have any of them joined the church since you joined the church? So they haven't, but I feel really blessed to um, come from the family that I come from because I feel like my parents, they they always had so much honesty and integrity. I mean, they're, of course, far from perfect. Um, and not being members of the church, they partake in things that um, that we we wouldn't. And so I didn't have, you know, a real, you know, solid, perfect childhood. But um, but they've always taught me, they've always been an example of being really honest. They are hard workers that um, they would never, you know, get paid for something that they weren't doing. They, they have always been just that example of yeah. integrity to me that I think really set the foundation for... Um, for me to be, um, to be a member of the church. And then my sister, um, who's like my best friend in the world, she isn't a member of the church, but she will be a great member of the church one day. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully not in too long, but she is just, she is such a great example of Christ-like love to me. And, um, and I tell her all the time, I'm like, wow, like I'm a member of the church and I understand Christ-like love, but she, her not being a member of the church and never really reading the scriptures, she still is able to just love people with this great love that I'm just like, oh, one day you're just going to be such a great member of the church and help people to feel God's love. Um, I mean, she does that already, but I'm just, I'm patiently waiting Mm because she says she's not ready yet, but she actually came to church on Sunday and she comes to church activities so I'm just patiently waiting for her to be ready. That's so, so awesome. and my family I grew up with are really, are really great and really supportive. They've always been supportive um, 
of me joining the church. Um, so yeah, they've, they've been great. That's awesome. I love, I love hearing stories like that. <clears throat> um, well, I was going to say, because I know I've heard um, I've heard you ask before yeah. um, about people's languages, yeah. um, their tribal languages, and how much that I wish that I had a language to refer back to. Um, but it's funny because our tribe, like, it's not funny, um, <laughs> our tribe doesn't have a language like the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde. It's several different tribes put together. And, um, and... I guess in some of those tribes, they might have some portions of language. Um, but there is a trade language that um, was used from Southern Oregon all the way up to Alaska. And um, and it's called Chinook Wawa. And my tribe has um, tried to revive this language. And so it's really neat that um, in the local colleges here, you can actually take... Um, take classes to learn Chinook Wawa and um, awesome. yeah and there's like YouTube videos and the tribe um, has a um, a preschool program that they run and they they do it with Chinook Wawa and it's an interesting language I, I know a little bit a few of the words and I learn a little bit about it and the funny thing is it's like 15% um, of the words are um, derived from French hmm. so because it's a trade language so oh, yeah. it was used with the tribal members and when they were trading with european settlers or european traders and um and so it's just it's just really interesting i hear other other people that have these tribal languages and i get kind of envious and i'm like oh you know we just have this like this one that's just kind of a fragment of a language that was um that only a few people even knew few a few years ago thankfully um there's a lot more people that are learning it and um and things like that now but it's just i don't know i think about um in the book of mormon when it says you know we would be scattered and smitten mm -hmm. and that happened and we lost our languages we lost our culture because i, I was just talking to my grandma the other day and she said so one of the things i grew up doing that i really attribute to my culture is going to powwows and she told me that the first time she went to a powwow, she was already an elder. <laughs> and oh, so I'm like, wow. Yeah, yeah. So, and so I'm like, well, that wasn't even something that, you know, you did in your culture. Like, and she's like, no. And, and I was like, well, did you ever, did you ever dance? And she was like, no, I never danced like that. <laughs> and, you know, she's, um, she's full native and she grew up on the reservation and everything. And so she says she, they didn't have powwows and they didn't dance and, um, I know she went to a, a Catholic school as a kid and um, she was made to be kind of ashamed mm -hmm. of her heritage. And so I don't know if maybe there's just some things she just didn't want to remember, but, um, but it's just a hard thing. I wish that we had, um, we had more of our culture still preserved. And so those that do, I hope that they're really grateful for that. I, I hope that they're grateful that they have, that they have those, um, those things that they can refer back to and teach their children and everything. Cause it seems like a lot of, a lot of mine, at least on my, um, Umpqua and Rogue River side are lost, but, um, mm -hmm. I should really learn more about the Shoshone Bannock tribe because I'm pretty sure they have a language and a little bit more stuff, but yeah. Yeah. Um, so thank you for that. Um, this, this past week when I was, um, when I was down there with the Book of Mormon extras, um, I tried to make friends with everybody. And something that I asked a lot of people was, what's something that makes you special? So what's something that makes you special, uh, Jessica? What do you feel like um, is unique about you? Wow. Um, I like to say I'm really humble. No. <laughs> <laughs> no um and i don't know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> special about me um well you know right now i'm in the thick of being a parent being a mother and so um i like to i guess um feel like i'm learning a lot this is it's such a learning experience to be a parent 
Um, I, I'm not really answering the question. <laughs> something special no um, that's a that's a hard thing for a lot of people to think about like wait what I know I'm special but how am I special yeah I guess um just the things that have refined me make me special right like being a parent that's refined me and mm -hmm. um growing up um outside the gospel that that can refine a lot of people you know um I've always wanted that um that I've always, I've seen these people who have grown up in the church and who've had generations in the church and they seem like they just got it down. Of course, I'm sure they don't, right? It's just what, what we see. Everybody has their problems. Yeah. Um, but still, I know that the gospel makes, um, makes a family so much happier and um, so much more fulfilled. So I'm, I'm grateful that I can give that to my posterity. Um, yeah. So just those, yeah, those things that have refined me in my life, I think, those learning experiences um, that I've been able to come to this place where um, where I can be a member of the church, I can go to the temple, I can teach my children the gospel, um, all of those things I just are so special to me yeah. and, and yeah, make me who I am. Yeah. What do you love about the temple? Oh, I haven't been there in so long. <laughs> I know, me too. Right? I, I have an appointment to go, but it's still a couple weeks away. Um, it's just the peace that it brings, right? Um, the revelation you can receive there. And that we can do the work for our ancestors that they, um, that they so much need and that they're asking us to do. And like I said, um, finding in my ancestry members of the church just makes me just makes me know that there's a reason that I, the reason that I joined the church wasn't just for me. It wasn't just so that I could be fulfilled and um, it's for my ancestors and it's for my posterity. And so I love that, um, that in this gospel, that in the temple, we can achieve those things. Yeah. Has, um, <clears throat> have you ever taken a, a question in your heart and mind to, general conference and received an answer I don't think I've I, it's ever been one specific thing in fact even in my life like just having one specific question and wanting one specific answer to it I, I haven't had those experiences a lot it's more like just being guided and staying on on the covenant path and all those little things that are necessary to do that all those all those little adjustments that you need to stay on that covenant path. Um, I feel like those are, those are the things that have guided me. It's, I don't, I don't know if I've ever really had some big question besides, you know, maybe should I marry my husband or, um, or how we should plan our family. Um, but even those weren't, um, there wasn't like one big answer. It's more just like, like a little bit of light and you still have to step into the dark right and kind of trust that you're doing the right thing um so yeah it's i i love general conference i love hearing from the leaders of the church and um and having having the spirit that just radiates at that time and helps you to to find find that path that you need to be on those little corrections you need to make or those those little changes in your life that are necessary I love that answer because, um, first of all, I don't always take a question. In fact, I have rarely taken a question to general conference. But I also think that parallels a lot of us, how we've gained our testimony and kept our testimony. It's it's staying, doing the things and doing what we're supposed to do that we know that we can keep it. So I really appreciate that answer. Thank you for that answer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have you had any, um, what's hard for you and how do you get through those hard things? Oh, that's so personal. No. <laughs> <laughs> we can skip no. it if you want to skip it. <laughs> no, it's fine. No, I mean, um, things that are hard for me are, I mean, every day is hard for us, right? This, this life is hard for us living this life on this earth is it's not supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be, um, 
we're supposed to be learning, we're supposed to be growing, and there can't be that that growth without a little bit of pain. And um, so, like I said, parenting is um, is such a great learning experience. There's so much growth there, and having a 15 year old who just in so so few years is going to be making all of his very own decisions and out on his own. I just kind of stress, have I done enough to prepare him? And, um, and so there's that aspect of it where it's okay. I'm going to have to start letting go and start seeing, um, if I've done enough and, um, where else I can still hold on and try to help him. And then, and then there's the younger ones who need everything from you. And so, um, I really think that parenting is such a refining experience and, and something that can, um, can really, um, help us draw nearer to God, but also, you know, being the only member of the church in my family and my extended family, you know, neither of my parents and my siblings aren't. Um, and like I said, they've always been really accepting at least my parents and, um, and my one sister that I'm, that I'm really good. Um, she's my best friend, you know, um, there have been things here and there that, um, where my family thinks I'm judging them just kind of based on the way I live. Like they see the way I live and they kind of assume I'm judging them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, this is, I do what you want. You know, I, that is, please do what you want. I don't want to tell you what to do. I don't want that responsibility (laughs) and I don't want that. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't want to do that. That is exactly what I don't want to do. Um, but I have had accusations of doing that. And that is so frustrating because as a member of the church, we don't, we don't want to do that. And, um, it's something that I try really hard not to do. So I have been accused of that here and there with my, I guess, even people who, whose family are members of the church could still, um, could still have that accusation, but definitely having the contrast between the lifestyles has, has kind of, um, put a wedge there too. So that's, that's something that has been hard for me. Yeah. So how do you get through it? Well, they can, I just let them say what they want to say and think what they want to think. And if they want to accuse me of that, um, it makes me really sad, but, um, but there's nothing I can do to really, um, I mean, if there was, if there was something I could say to change their mind, then great. But, um, if that's what they want to think, that's, I have to just let them think that because I'm not going to force them to think something or to, you know, I'm not going to argue with them or, um, I know that's not the answer to it, right. Is to argue with somebody or to, um, try to prove somebody else wrong. That's not my, that's not my goal. Yeah. So I kind of am just like, all right, I'm sorry you feel that way. Love them back. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm still going to love you either way, but I'm sorry you feel that way. (laughs) Yeah. Um, what is, do you have a favorite scripture? Oh, I knew you were going to ask me this. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so bad with, um, like memorizing scriptures. Oh, and I'm having bad with that a favorite. too. Oh, I mean, I study scriptures all the time and I come across just amazing ones, right? That I highlight, but or, I haven't okay. really. Is there one that recently you're like, oh man, this, this scripture I hadn't thought about it this way before because that might be more fresh on your mind. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, we do come follow me in our home and, um, there have been some really great ones, um, recently in that. And, um, the one for this week, um, about, um, making your home a heaven on earth. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's just something that we're striving toward and something we're really thinking about this week in our home and, um, talking to each other kindly. And my husband is gone all week. So I'm like, Hey children, we're talking to each other kindly this week. (laughs) You know, (laughs) it's, it's only Monday. (laughs) <laughs> it's the beginning of the week so we're giving it a little bit of a little bit of time no it's my kids they get along pretty well um they actually uh they actually are, are pretty close to each other there's not a whole lot of fighting but just um just a reminder and for myself you know um I've I've 
put up a picture um, that says love is spoken here um, a while back. And I said, okay, this is a reminder, not a proclamation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because we all need to be reminded of that. So, so I just, um, I just love those reminders in the gospel that just, um, that just help us have more peace at home and in our lives because it's so crazy out in the world and to just have your home where you can have so much peace and have the gospel and the spirit there is um, really a refuge, right? It's so important. Yeah. Do you have, do you and your children have favorite songs, primary songs that you guys sing together? Do you sing together? Yeah. So we really love, there's um, actually this YouTube channel called LDS Hymns and it has, um, it has all the hymns and it has the words and it has the man playing the piano. Huh. And so we play that every night. Um, we we just choose a song from that every night. And so it's really great because it has the words there for my kids to learn. Um, there's another one called Latter Day Kids, and they have they have more they have uh, primary songs because in LDS hymns it's mostly just the hymns. So we'll do one or the other every night, and um, and we love to sing together. My kids love love to sing most of them anyways. I love the hymns so much. And it's gotten to a point in my life where I really don't care a whole lot to listen to other music because some other music is just, um, it's just so terrible. Some of the things that are in in music, um, it's just, it's not the greatest. And so um, I really just love to listen to the hymns and um, especially the words because we love poetry in our household too. And so those words are poetry and um yeah, we love to sing together. We don't, I don't know anything about music. I didn't grow up um, learning about music whatsoever. So coming into the church, I'm like, okay, I don't even know how to lead music. I was um, in the primary presidency and had to, they asked me to do music time one time. And I was like, I don't even know how to lead music. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. how. So I had to stand in the front and tell them to sing a song and just stand there. And it was super awkward. <laughs> So I guess I could probably also utilize YouTube to learn a little bit how to lead music. I guess it's not that hard. Um, <laughs> but so I don't know anything about music. So having these resources where I can just put it on YouTube and we can still learn the words and still feel the spirit is really great. Um, just these, all of these resources at our fingertips, right, to to have the gospel in our lives. Yeah, I love that. I love that so much. Um Jessica, I have loved how real and honest you've been with us tonight and with me. And we don't even know each other very well, but I I feel like the things that you've said are so, um, so real for, for all of us who are in motherhood right now and, and men and in other aspects too, whoever is listening to this will find that your truth is, um, Uh, inspiring and uplifting so thank you I have one final question for you what does it mean to you to know that you belong to the tribe of Israel you know learning that was so special in my life because um just having being a part of a tribe that doesn't have a whole lot of its history still intact um, there's, there's so much that I feel is, was lost. Um, it really, uh, was something that helped me to heal and, um, not be angry and not, um, point fingers and, um, and blame. And so knowing that everything will be made right one day and that, um, everything today is, is how it should be and is for our learning experiences. Um, It was really special to know that this gospel is so important to our people, to my ancestors, and um, that it was that the Book of Mormon was written for us, for us to, I mean, it was written for everybody, right? But for, it's so important for us. And so that was so special and so healing for me to, to learn yeah thank you thank you for your time and i appreciate all of your all of your words of advice and encouragement thank you thanks so much
this is a late post. Uh, I'm posting on Thursday instead of Tuesday. Last week, I got to do, as you heard in my, in our conversation last week, I got to do some days as an extra on the Book of Mormon videos. And, um, the first day that I was there, we were the travelers who had gone through the whole night to get to Jesus. And, um, when we were there as extras, we were kind of being silly. We were excited to be on set. We were new in our costumes. We were new in the set. So we, um, it was just kind of fun. And then, um, they painted our hands and our feet to look like we'd been getting dirty and, um, yeah. So it, it wasn't a spiritual experience when we showed up. It was fun. But then on Wednesday morning when I was, um, I didn't go on Wednesday and I was talking with my kids at breakfast. They're like, well, tell us what you've been doing. And I started telling them, <clears throat> I started telling them how, um, what they did. They painted our hands. They painted our feet. We got costumes. We had dirt put in our hair and, but then I just, realized the actual importance of what had just happened with me and I got emotional and I said I would I would I would travel the whole night if I knew that I could see Jesus the next day and um I think that is one of the most powerful things that I learned from the week. I would. I would travel to see Jesus. I would come through the night. And I guess now the question is, what would I do in this modern life to meet Jesus? How do I show that I'm traveling through the night to get to him? Um, what things am I leaving behind so that I can get there fast enough? I had a really great time meeting lots of people. I tried to meet everybody that I was around. Um, I di didn't memorize everybody's names, but I tried to memorize as many as possible. Uh, there were about 275 of us there. So that's a lot of people to meet. And when you're staying in the same place, you can't meet everybody. I, I'm i thankful for the Book of Mormon. I love the Book of Mormon. I'm thankful that it testifies of a Savior and a Father in Heaven. I also love knowing that I have a Mother in Heaven. I have a testimony. Of all these things. I just hope that you are well. I hope that you are finding your testimony and or strengthening your testimony. And I hope that you have a super wonderful, awesome day. Tribe of Testimonies is not affiliated with The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The music is a traditional hymn, Come Thou Found of Every Blessing, arranged and performed by Kyle Forsyth. If you know someone who might be interested in being a guest, please reach out to me at tribeoftestimonies at gmail.com.